Welcome back. In this lecture, we'll talk about network functions virtualization, which is a way for network operators to place arbitrary functions in virtual machines and distribute them across the network. NFV is increasingly taking hold with the rise of lightweight containerization. I'll talk a little bit about what NFV is, including various problems and challenges that arise with NFV. I'll then devote some time to talking about SLIC, a system for orchestrating the placement of network functions throughout the network and steering traffic flows through those network functions based on high-level network control. To understand NFV, it helps to start by understanding the status quo, where middlebox functions are placed in separate monolithic middleboxes. In contrast, NFV places these functions in virtual machines, or even virtual containers, and distributes these functions across the network. By decoupling these functions from hardware that hosts them, operators gain increased flexibility over how packet processing is performed. Some of the benefits of NFV include reduced capital expenditures and time to market, ability to scale middlebox functions up and down as network demand changes, developing services that are specialized or targeted for a particular application, and doing so in ways that are independent of individual hardware vendors. New use cases include virtualized services for enterprise, content distribution, virtualized core networks, and the integration of production and testing. One way I like to think about NFV is that it makes it possible to create functional elements, sometimes on significantly finer granularity, as opposed to monolithic middle boxes. When we think about various middle box functions, for example, we can see that each of them is a combination of smaller, modular functions. One view of NFV is thus that we should be taking these individual functional elements and placing them in virtual containers rather than deploying monolithic middle box functions. Now the concept of NFV is simple enough, but one of the main challenges that operators face is a problem called orchestration, whereby operators implement modular network functions and a controller figures out how to place these functions throughout the network. Another challenge is customizability whereby a network operator might want some very specific middlebox-like functions for specific traffic flows. Slick's approach is to allow a programmer to define functional units called elements that can be reused and composed to create more complex functions. It provides a programming abstraction and a runtime system that supports that abstraction. I'll now talk briefly about both the abstraction and the runtime. The Slick programming abstraction allows an operator to define applications and elements. Network operator writes the application using an existing repository of elements and defines how different flows should be forwarded through chains of these elements. The runtime then handles when and where to install the elements, as well as how to send the traffic through specific instances of these elements. For example, ordinary network traffic might be forwarded along one path, but an operator might specify that each flow to port 80 should be sent through some logger element. The controller is then responsible for both placing that element on a particular node in the network and installing forwarding entries in the switches so that traffic destined for port 80 is forwarded through the appropriate elements. Here's some example code for the corresponding slick application. The code defines an element that logs HTTP traffic. A network operator defines this function and which flows the function should be applied on and the runtime then subsequently determines where to place the element in the network. Slick elements are the basic functional unit in the Slick environment and are inspired by the Click programming model. They expose a uniform interface for writing functions. A specification file allows an element to describe its properties to the Slick controller. The Slick runtime determines how to place these functional elements in the network given a specified mapping between flow space and sequences of elements. The goal of this placement is to do so in a way that satisfies specifications about the sequences of elements and functions and yet achieves the desired operational objectives, such as minimizing network congestion. One way to perform this placement is to place elements that increase traffic volume, such as decompression, closer to the traffic destination, and place those that decrease traffic volume, such as firewalling, closer to the source. The other aspect of the runtime for orchestrating network functions virtualization is steering. This is the process of routing traffic flows that belong to certain portions of flow space through sequences of functional elements that have been placed in the network. One way to do this is to represent each element instance as a node in an overlay graph. Elements in each tier of the graph represent a particular functional element, 
and multiple nodes in the same tier represent instances of the same element. The steering problem considers this overlay graph for each source destination pair and computes a path for each flow that must traverse this sequence of elements that achieves the desired network objective. Significant future work remains in NFE, including better algorithms for placement and steering, faster data plane forwarding for elements, better ways to resolve policy conflicts, and ways to verify network policies that a network operator might specify. In conclusion, NFV is an approach for deploying middlebox-like functions on virtual appliances in the network, often on a finer granularity than monolithic middleboxes. Two important aspects of orchestrating these network functions involve developing a high-level programming abstraction for defining these functions and how they should be applied to network flows, and developing a runtime that adequately implements the specified abstractions. Slick is one way of addressing these challenges, but significant work still remains.